July 17, 1998. It started like a usual quiet evening in the villages along the north coast of Papua New Guinea. Then, at 5.49 p.m., the ground shook violently. Suddenly, a 7.0 magnitude earthquake struck. It sent shockwaves through the region. Walls cracked, homes trembled, and the earth beneath the villagers' feet shifted and twisted. It lasted for 19 seconds with a depth of 19 miles and seemed like a typical earthquake. And while it caused some damage, this wasn't the kind of destruction that screamed doom. So people were tricked. They thought it was over. They didn't know that the worst was still coming. Then some villagers noticed mysterious lights. It began with a flash of red light along the horizon, a streak that looked like fire. It appeared shortly after the initial earthquake, stretching across the northern sky above the ocean. It flared brilliantly, then vanished in an instant. What could it have been? People started speculating whether it's a warning about something or just sunlight reflecting strangely. But just as it disappeared, it was followed by a loud booming sound from the sea. No one knew what that meant, and some villagers went to the beach, curious to scan the views. What they noticed there chilled them to their core. The ocean looked wrong. The water wasn't calm. It churned, bubbled, and boiled in an eerie, unnatural way. That's when they saw it. A massive wave building in the distance, rushing toward them with terrifying speed. Panic spread like wildfire. People climbed trees, pushed boats into the lagoon, hoping to escape the approaching monster. Unfortunately, it was too late. The first wave hit with unimaginable force and swept away entire villages in an instant. The debris was scattered around, trees were uprooted, buildings were displaced up to 160 to 200 feet inland. Even decades later, some of these affected villages can't be accessed by roads. At the same time, another strange phenomenon emerged. Many people described a red glow at the crest of the tsunami, as though the wave carried fire in its peak. They described an eerie glow as the wave approached the shoreline, a deep and unearthly hue, visible even from far-off places like Etape. And this was only the beginning. Two more waves followed in quick succession. The second one was the most horrifying, from 33 to almost 50 feet high. By the time the ocean finally receded, the coastline was unrecognizable. After the waves had ravaged everything, leaving villages in ruins, the sky put on one final display. Survivors described a yellow or yellow-red glow illuminating the sky over the ocean. One man who survived by climbing up a tree saw the glow lingering over the horizon, stretching toward the direction of Arap and Atapi. At Malol, the sisters of the mission looked out to the sea and were stunned by the surreal calm of the golden water. It was still as glass and lit by this unearthly glow. The glow was so vivid, it lit up the entire devastated landscape. Luckily, this allowed survivors to begin searching for their missing loved ones. A lot of people believe these lights were supernatural, an omen of sorts. This event ended up being catastrophic, sudden, and unpredictable. The Royal Australian Air Force responded immediately, sending in planes with relief supplies. People started an investigation. What exactly caused this disaster? Turns out, this tsunami wasn't like most others. Tsunami waves are very different from regular ones. We usually imagine huge breaking waves next to the beach. But they might first look like the water is rushing away from the shore. Stay vigilant, because this is a warning sign. The water will come back very quickly and rise like a massive tide, often with devastating force. Rarely they come alone. They often arrive in a series, destroying everything along the coastline. They happen when a large amount of water in the ocean or a big lake gets suddenly pushed out of place. The main causes are usually earthquakes, which happen when the Earth's tectonic plates shift suddenly under the ocean. 
they start lifting or lowering the seafloor, and this pushes the water above it, causing huge waves. This tsunami in Papua New Guinea was completely different, though. At first, scientists thought that it was caused by the Australian and Pacific tectonic plates slipping against each other. But it turned out that the earthquake itself wasn't the problem. It really was pretty small. However, it had triggered a massive underwater landslide. When the seabed shifted, it pushed away an insane volume of water. The waves reached almost 50 feet high, like a four-story building. That's how we realize that even small earthquakes can actually cause massive tsunamis via underwater landslides. What's even worse is that tsunamis like this can happen with little or no warning, simply because the earthquake alarms don't go off. But what about that bubbling and boiling of water that people saw? Turns out, this was the release of underwater gases. Beneath the ocean floor, there are pockets of gas trapped in the sediments. For example, methane, which is often found in oil and gas fields, or hydrogen sulfide, a gas that smells like rotten eggs. During the earthquake, the seabed probably cracked or shifted, releasing these gases into the water. This caused bubbling or boiling. The water might have heated in some areas. People mentioned that the waves felt hot and even stung their skin. The chemicals in it most likely made things even worse, irritating their skin. These gas eruptions might also have played a role in making the tsunami stronger. Maybe they were the ones that loosened the sediments that caused the underwater landslide, or pushed the water up when the gas escaped. It's like shaking up a bottle of soda. If the pressure releases suddenly, it causes a huge reaction. But what about the strange lights? Well, that's more complicated. There's a phenomenon called earthquake lights. They happen all around the world – flashes, glows, or aurora-like effects. Although they're usually white, bluish, or even multicolored, sometimes these lights last seconds, sometimes up to tens of minutes at any point in an earthquake. If we go by their description, then the first red flash could have happened because of electricity. Earth's crust is full of quartz and similar stuff that can release electricity under pressure. When the earthquake shook the ground, all that electricity traveled up into the air. Gases from before could have helped here. They could ignite or interact with charged particles in the air, making the lights even brighter. As the wave continued to churn up sand, rocks, and debris, the intense pressure and movement could have released more sparks. This could cause the fire-like lights at the wave's crest that people noticed. Finally, the yellow light could have been all these electrocyzed gases rising into the atmosphere. Methane and other gases interacted with Earth's magnetic field and created something like aurora borealis. But these are all speculations. The most heartbreaking part of the story is that tragedy in Papua New Guinea was preventable. Scientists knew the tsunami was coming, though it arrived earlier than they expected. The first wave struck between 10 and 25 minutes after the earthquake, about 5 minutes earlier than models showed. That means that it started somewhere close to the shore. The reason no one evacuated in time was simple. Local people didn't have a tsunami warning system or even enough knowledge about tsunamis to understand that an earthquake might lead to one or why the water was acting weird. Things like that haven't happened in Papua New Guinea in over 60 years. But this was a wake-up call. From this immense tragedy came lessons and resilience. A year after the disaster, all the surviving locals watched a documentary that explained what had happened and taught them what to do if it ever happened again. This effort saved lives because the story did happen again. A similar earthquake and tsunami struck the nearby island of Vanuatu in November 1999. But this time, the villagers were ready. They remembered what they had seen in the film. Instead of panic, they acted quickly, and luckily, hundreds of lives were saved. 
Now, tsunami warning systems are everywhere in developed areas. They can send alerts to people via sirens, text messages, or broadcasts as soon as a potential tsunami is detected. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.